making a run for the longest name in Clarkson program history. Not quite up there, but it's going to be a tongue twister for the rest of the year. Pleased to welcome Ethan Langenegger, our incoming transfer goalie out of Lake Superior State. Ethan, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Clarkson Golden Knights. Yeah, thank you very much, Casey. I appreciate it. You're spending the summer out in your home, Canloops, British Columbia. What's been going on out there as you get prepared to move to Potsdam? Yeah, not too much. I've been a little back and forth between there and Calgary, Alberta. Uh, just been training, getting ready in the gym, on the ice. Had some really good ice times between both cities and playing lots of golf with my buddies, kind of just enjoying some downtime as well and gearing up for a big year here. Every single guy we've talked to so far has uh, added golf to the roster, so it's going to be a intense group of golf competition coming up here as you look forward to uh, – your your one year as Clarkson, you'll enter as a graduate student coming up. What's your low round out on the course so far? Low round would be like an eighty two. That's that's good for me. Uh, I'm probably about a twelve handicap. So if I can go low eighties, I'm pretty happy. I've yet to break that eighty barrier, but maybe uh, Potsdam will be the place to do it. Summer got off to a bit of a rough start. You had a snorkeling incident, your first time ever trying snorkeling, and barely made it out alive. Yeah, no, it was in uh, Mexico. I uh, got to celebrate my graduation and uh, yeah, went out snorkeling and hopped in the water and first ever time in the ocean. And the first thing I got was a wave right over the top of my head that filled my snorkel with salt water and took a nice breath of salt water through the mouth, tried to breathe through my nose and that was covered with the mask. So I didn't get any oxygen there. And then took the mask off and second wave went over the head. <laughs> so another mouth and nose full of salt water. And then, yeah, that was it for me. I was I was out of there and back on the boat watching the other people struggle. So ever going to go back? Yeah, maybe some calmer water. I'll try it again. Uh, you spend your summer playing ball hockey. You're not a goalie in ball hockey, though. You play as a forward. Uh, how does that translate to your game? Obviously, it's uh, a, a fun sport to play out there, but... I'm sure it you know helps loosen up the hands. Puck handling as a goalie is pretty important when the defense is uh, storming at you up the ice. Yeah, it definitely gets the hands going. Uh, I play with a big group of buddies out in Kamloops there, and we have a really good team and just have a lot of fun with it. And it's honestly really good cardio. It's it's harder than most people think. You don't get to glide at all, so you get your steps in, that's for sure. Your dad was a big influence on you from a young age. He was a huge hockey fan. You grew up watching the game and got into it at a young age. Uh, talk about his impact on your career as you've gotten to this point. Yeah, no, it's massive. He's He's been just a huge influence on me for the game of hockey. We grew up watching hockey together pretty much every every Edmonton Oilers game for sure, but really just hockey games in general, going to uh, local Western Hockey League games or, or BCHL games or whatever it may be. So that's really been a huge staple in our relationship, and it's continued on through into my uh, early adult adult years for sure. The Edmonton Oilers are my pick to win the Stanley Cup coming up. They had a, a major offseason. Who's your uh, your favorite player on the team's obviously got to be the the leading scorer there, but who's your favorite pickup that they got this offseason? Oh, I like uh, I, I got to go Skinner. I think that's a really good pickup. I think he's going to fit really well into that forward group and have a really big bounce back here, but Arvidsson too. Both those guys down the wings are going to make that forward group. Just even more fun to watch next year, I think. I think Skinner might have been the the steal of the offseason all around in free agency. Uh, you pretty quickly became a goalie growing up. You started playing around the age of four. By five, you were in the goalie pads. What made you make that decision to go from uh, a goal scorer that every kid dreams of being and scoring the game-winning goal to the kid that's eating the pucks uh, and, and preventing those goal scorers from winning? Yeah, I wish I say I wish I could say I remember, but uh, all I really remember is just doing it once, and it must have gone really well. And I, I just had a lot of fun, and we were kind of just at that age where you're rotating every week or every game or whatever someone else is going in net, and I just kept putting my hand up every game, and it just happened that I happened to be pretty good at it, and yeah, that, that was the end of that, and here we are, what, eighteen years later, I guess. Cam Luke's British Columbia, walk me through uh, junior hockey playing there, and obviously Canada, a uh, a major hockey hub, and especially being close to Edmonton. 
um, as you as you were growing up there. Talk me through your your youth process and your development as you started to improve and started to think towards juniors. Yeah, I mean, everyone's everyone. If you grow up in Canada and 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 you like sports, you're you're playing hockey. That's kind of a staple, and definitely the case for me. I loved it from a really young age, and and yeah, grew up in Kamloops and played with all my buddies all the way up till uh, and got to stay home all the way up until my last year of midget and graduate high school there and play U eighteen at home my 17 year old year and uh we had a really good year that year and i personally had a good year and uh signed with the salmon arm silverbacks and the bchl after that and made the jump there as an 18 year old and then got to play two years there really close to home it's only about an hour outside of kamloops so that was awesome and my grandpa grandparents live there and they both got to watch me play a lot of games which i know they were grateful for and from there went to lake state and then now i'm a golden knight Playing midget, you played for the Thompson Blazers, and that team made the playoffs for the first time in over a decade. You were a big part of that. Uh, one of your core memories as a kid, and talk me through uh, the the run that team went on to, you know, crack the barrier. You guys steadily improved throughout your uh, time as a midget, and then finally get into the playoffs for the first time in quite a while for the program. It was really cool. Yeah, that, that program had a lot of struggles and pretty much a new coaching staff every year, but kind of got coaches that fit and the manager that fit and that, that really cared about kind of developing players and turning that program into a winning program. And and yeah, we happened to, to be able to really take advantage of that. My last year, we had a lot of guys that maybe typically in the past would have left for junior early, but wanted to kind of succeed with that group and, and with that team. And yeah, to this day, definitely one of the most fun years of hockey I've ever had and going through that with those guys that I'm still friends with to this day. You mentioned your grandpa being from Salmon Arm. Uh, that's where you played in the BCHL. You grew up watching games there with your grandpa. What was the honor like when you got selected to play there um, and being able to stay close to your family throughout that process, which is always so tough when kids have to start moving away from home? Yeah, no, it was awesome. It's something I'm super grateful for just getting, like I said, to to play at home basically all the way until I was done high school. And then even for my two years of junior moving away, I was only about an hour down the road. And to have family and friends be able to watch me a lot throughout those years meant a lot to me. And I know it meant a lot to them and are definitely memories that, that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. So, Just like on the Thompson Blazers uh, you led Salmon Arm to a sweep over Victoria in uh, the playoffs for the BCHL. COVID unfortunately shut down the rest of that season. Uh, but another one of your, uh, you know, big memories from junior play. Talk about that sweep and uh, kind of the the role you played and what made that so memorable with that team. Yeah, it was awesome. I uh, we had such a good group that year and and a really good team and. We were rolling in the playoffs. I think we might have been third in our division, played the crossover and played the Victoria Grizzlies and beat them the first two games at home and then went into a, a tough building to play in on the road and, and managed to win the next two as well, really close games, but managed to win four straight. And we were about to be off to trail literally the day we were going to get on the bus to go to trail for the second round. The, got the call that the season was ending, which was definitely unfortunate. I would have loved to see that through, but I will add that we did the NHL 20 simulation at the end of that year. And I represented Salmon Arm and we did take home that championship. So that's something I'm proud of, but. I spent the last four years at Lake Superior state. And for those who think that maybe Ethan's face is a little bit familiar, he's undefeated against the golden Knights, unfortunately played at Shield arena. So you've seen him up close and personal. And uh, just like Frank Marat, who was a, a one-time enemy now, joining forces with the Golden Knights. But going back before uh, you entered the NCAA, talk about the recruiting process that led you to Lake Superior. Yeah, it was kind of near the end of my uh, rookie year in Salmon Arm, my 18-year-old year, and uh, really kind of just started talking to Lake State right kind of in the playoffs of my rookie year there and had a pretty good playoffs, even though we ended up falling in the first round. But kind of stayed in touch with uh, the coaching staff there at Lake State throughout the summer and kind of just started to build a relationship with them. And And they offered a, a scholarship the following fall, kind of going into my second year. And it just felt like a really good fit and somewhere where I could learn from a really good 
goalie and Merrick's mittens my freshman year before being able to kind of take over from there and, and get to play a lot of games and have a really good opportunity to develop my game and and play a lot which was huge for me so we took a trip out there and you had four years living in the uh, upper peninsula what in the world did you do out there for four years to keep yourself occupied uh, I am thankful that I had three really good roommates that I enjoyed spending time with because it was a lot of indoor time. Those are some of the craziest winters I've ever seen in my life. That's for sure. And definitely not a lot going on in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, but we definitely made the best of it and made some of my closest friends for life there. So I'm grateful for it as, as cold as I was a lot of those days. I was just out there on Lake Gojibik for a bachelor party. And definitely in the summer, it's a, a much nicer place to hang out than it is uh, in the opposite winter. You're going to get a little bit of that in Potsdam, pretty similar cold that comes up through there. Not maybe as much, but um, it's definitely not an Arizona state climate coming to Potsdam, New York. Uh, your freshman year, the team in Lake state won the conference. You got a berth into the NCAA Um one of your fondest college memories to this point until Clarkson goes on a run this year, hopefully led by you. Uh, talk about, you know, playing in the national tournament, what that was like in the process to get there winning the conference. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was definitely probably doing more watching than playing that year as a freshman. We had a really good senior goalie. So it was just awesome to be a part of that group though. We had a really good group of guys and, and, and a really good team there. And, and it was, it was just cool to go through that whole, playoff run with those guys and, and and learn from a really good goalie and leader. And really that whole leadership group was, was awesome to kind of learn from as a freshman. And, and it kind of showed us the way of, of what it takes to, to get to that point. And yeah, it was just so much fun to be able to, to win the conference and, and then go on to the national tournament and ended up falling to the eventual, eventual national champions. Uh, but just the, the memories there and the experience I'm, I'm super grateful for. We got Lucas Kalbla out of the transfer portal. Now, Ed, you from uh, Lake State, you you talk about playing under some veteran leaders and especially in goaltenders. Development is such a big thing throughout uh, NCAA career. To get you to this point, looking back on your four years at Lake State, what have been some of the biggest things that you've had to learn playing in the NCAA, some of the biggest assets that you've added to your game um, that have molded you into a starting player? Yeah, I think just kind of reading the play at a higher level. And obviously the game's coming at you faster than junior and plays are happening that little bit quicker, but that can be the difference between making a save or the puck ending up in the back of the net. So I think just adapting to that and then just being more patient at the same time. I know that might sound counterintuitive, but uh, you know, when you first kind of get to a new level, you you almost want to attack and, and do everything you can to kind of stand out and make an impression. But for me, it was just learning to kind of let the game come to me and, and be patient and just make reads at a higher level. And I think that kind of just comes with experience. And I definitely feel like that developed over my time at Lake State. Its fans can thank Lake Superior State for not having a graduate program. Uh, that fact led you into the portal and you'll enter the NBA program this fall as you head to Clarkson. Now, uh, what was the recruiting process like as you looked forward trying to find a graduate program? What led you to picking Clarkson as your destination here for your fifth year? Yeah, no, uh, it, it was a, definitely a hectic few days. It was my first time kind of being, it almost felt like free agency a little bit. So just kind of going through that process was interesting, but it, it just honestly right away really felt like a good fit. And obviously it's a really high end school and MBA program, which is a big part of it. But at the end of the day, it's a really, really good hockey program that I got to play against firsthand and kind of see how good of a team that can be. And obviously a team that's had a lot of success in, in, in a really good conference over the last, you know, decade or so. And, and I just really wanted to be a part of that. And I kind of knew, just right away, honestly, that it was the right fit. And I, I couldn't be more excited to be a Golden Knight in October. If you can't beat him, make him join you mentality for the Golden Knights. And it'll uh, be nice to have your your success in Shield Arena on our side coming up here. As you look forward uh, to the upcoming season, what are some things you're most excited about as you look forward to playing in the green and gold for Clarkson, playing in Shield Arena every weekend? Yeah, uh 
first thing is definitely the atmosphere. The I got to experience firsthand what that looked like last fall, and it was pretty incredible. The fan support's great, and really just come out and support that team. And I'm just excited to be on the other end of on the positive end of that, as opposed to be in the road team. So I'm looking forward to that and just, just experiencing everything Clarkson has to offer. So you pride yourself on being a normal goalie, uh, in your definition, what does that mean as, uh, <laughs> as not an abnormal goalie or the, the standard, uh, vision that people have of goalies? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I get told. So I'm going to take other people's word for it. I guess I think for the most part, it just comes down to I'm a pretty laid back guy. I maybe don't have all the crazy superstitions that a lot of goalies have. I play sewer ball before games and a lot of guys say they never see goalies do that and just kind of do a regular warm up with the guys. I just kind of like to keep it pretty relaxed and and laid back at the same time obviously be focused but that I find for me just kind of gets me into the zone that I need to be in to, to play well I think I'm at my best when I'm relaxed and I guess that makes me just come off a little more normal than some other guys I guess but I don't know I, I feel like that's a question you might have to ask other guys maybe you're trekking it cross-continental on your trip to Potsdam coming up pretty soon here a 34 hour drive from British Columbia and you're making the trip with your dad who you said uh, was such an impact what's uh, a couple songs that are going to be must-haves on the playlist as you guys are going to be spending quite a bit of time together oh that's a good question we got pretty different tastes in music so I think there's going to be a little bit of everything going around it's a lot of hours to cover so I, I think we're probably both going to empty out our playlists and probably have to mix in a couple podcasts too to make the time go by what's your go-to podcast Hopefully it's going to be the Golden Knight Roundtable coming up. Yeah, that's the new one. That's the new one. I like uh, I like I like Spin Chicklets and I like uh, Joe Rogan a lot. Both of those that would probably be the two that I listen to the most. Another exciting uh, upcoming event for you. Your Lake State roommate is getting married August eighteenth. You're going to be a groomsman. What are you most looking forward to there? I'm just excited for them. I think that's a that's a massive day, obviously, for anyone and. I'm really excited for him. It's one of my closest friends and got to live with him for three years. Uh, so just excited to celebrate that day with him and at the same time play some golf in South Carolina. That doesn't suck either. And it'll get you away from Potsdam uh, for a little bit after the hectic move in process. That's going to be a, a, you know, I f almost feel more bad for your dad who's going to drive 34 hours back in the other direction. But uh, Ethan, it's been a, a pleasure catching up here and introducing yourself. To our fans, I'm sure they're going to get plenty familiar with you in the upcoming months as we get prepared for opening night that's closing in real quick, just about two months until the season opener. Looking forward to meeting you in person coming up here in a couple short weeks. Yeah, me yeah, me too. Thank you very much for having me on. It's great to great to meet you, and I'm looking forward to doing it in person here soon as well.